Members, the Right Honourable for Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 12th of June, 2018. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains. It pays respect to all its past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design for the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Thank you, CEO. Ladies and gentlemen, members, please be seated. Members, welcome to the uh, council meeting of uh, Tuesday, the 12th of June, 2018. The um, apologies and leave of absence, uh, of which we have two. We have an apology uh, from Councillor Moran and an apology from Councillor Antic. Otherwise, we have a full complement of members. Members, can I look to you, please? Our last meeting held on the uh, confirmation of minutes on the 22nd of May, 2018. Uh, and also a special meeting of council held on that same date. Can I please have a mover to adopt those minutes? Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Slama. Any questions about those minutes, members? There are not, so I put those before you to adopt. Those in favour? Those against? We adopt the minutes from the meetings held on the 22nd of May. Members, we have item five, uh, which is a public forums and deputations, of course. Members, I approved a um, public forum request um, from Miss Libby Hicks Maitland. Is Miss Hicks Maitland with us, or does Miss Hicks Maitland have someone who's presenting this on her behalf? We don't. So thank you, members. And secondly, um, I had and I have approved a. Um, uh, public forum request from Professor Norman Etherington from the formerly from the National Trust of South Australia. Um, Professor, please join us. I understand that you'd like to speak to the members. We'll afford you the period of um, five minutes. Welcome to the council chamber. Thank you, Lord Mayor and members, um, for the uh, privilege of being here. <coughs> uh, I have. Uh, because there is only five minutes, a briefing sheet which says what I said, and I hope the video camera confirms that. Uh, uh, I appear here this evening on behalf of our, the President of the National Trust, Mrs. Deborah Morgan, who cannot be here, uh, and the, uh, both the Chairman and the Deputy Chairman of our Cultural Heritage Advisory Committee are not able to be here, so they have pulled me out of the cupboard. Um, the, I resigned as president last November after five years of service. Uh, both of the things to which I want to speak uh, this evening concern local heritage protection, something that I've been interested in since 1983 when I was a member of the Lord Mayor's Heritage Advisory Committee that began the process of local heritage listing, uh, the pioneering process. Uh, and both personally and as a member of the National Trust, 
um, have been very concerned over the last three to five years to see the protections conferred by local heritage designation gradually eroded and eroded by bodies which are not responsible to electors as this council is um, by committees which often include no expertise in heritage but specifically I want to um, here on behalf of the National Trust speak in support of two motions on notice put by Councillor Sandy Wilkinson. And the first of these will not need much introduction for the, the members of this council. Um, the, his first motion suggests that we undertake a program to involve Donovan Rikima, who uh, spoke so eloquently uh, to the public forum sponsored by the Adelaide City Council late last year uh, on the subject of the economic value of heritage. And there's much, much, much that can be done in that area and much, much more than has been done in the past. It's not enough to recognize the heritage values of places, it's making those places live, making them active, making them pay the way, using them to provide new housing is very important. <clears throat> Uh, it's very important because some of the objectives that we all recognize uh, detailed, for instance, in the 30-year plan for metropolitan Adelaide, such as providing um, denser population, such as providing more affordable housing, such as providing a mix of housing types. Where do we find those three objectives most in at present? In our city, we find them in the designated heritage areas in our inner suburbs. So there is not just a cultural value to local heritage, there are economic values and there are unrealized economic values. And for that reason, we support that first motion on notice from Councillor Wilkinson. The second uh, item is. Um, proposed by Councillor Wilkinson that we support, which is uh, item 11.3, uh, which aims to clarify uh, the criteria for heritage listing. The criteria themselves for establishing heritage importance um, have worked well. They are similar from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Um, it is not often remembered that a single criterion, if a place satisfies a single criterion of the many, it qualifies for heritage protection if supported by this council. But there are other areas that uh, Councillor Wilkinson's motion seeks to address <coughs> which um, would repair um, distortions that have crept into the process of heritage listing over the last 30 to 40 years. Uh, it's often said this building meets the criteria, but it has been much altered and therefore is not worthy of protection. But being much altered is a not only um, not a recognized criteria for heritage listing, it actually gets in the way of development and life for heritage buildings. We as the National Trust recognize that if they're going to march on for another 100 and 150, 200 years, they have to serve new purposes and alterations will take, take place. The fact that there are alterations should not uh, be used, should not be recognized as a criteria for denying their heritage value. Um, and secondly, it is not always apparent, often not apparent from the outside of a heritage building that this place is of heritage importance. A good example is um, the uh, former Adelaide Synagogue and Synagogue Place in the East End. The um, kernel of that building <coughs> dates from the 1850s one of the oldest synagogues planted in the Southern Hemisphere, then later extended uh, by architect Edmund Wright 
in an elegant building, which is still partially visible from the Rundle car park if you go up to level seven. But in the 1930s, uh, redone in a facade in an Art Deco manner. All three of those eras constitute the heritage value of that building. Not one, not two, all three of them, because they represent the de development of an important religious congregation over time. And it's for reasons like yes, that, sir, if I may, that we support if I may that motion. Thank you, the I just encourage you to concluding arguments, which you've just done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've also uh, tabled a document you already know, our National Trust report on uh, local heritage. Thank you very much, Professor, <laughs> Professor Etherington, and can I thank you and commend you on behalf of Council for your five years of service as the Chair of the National Trust of South Australia for doing an extremely good job. Well done. Members, um, thank you. I'm going to take you along on your agenda, which will take you directly to uh, item 8.1. Members, you have a recommendation. My mistake, Judy, I'm racing ahead. Members, we have a petition, which is item 6.1, which is a tree replacement along our eastern side, eastern quadrant of Hurtle Square. Members, I require a mover from the council chamber to adopt that petition, please. Moved by Councillor Clarahan, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Any questions about the petition, members? No, so we'll, go, we'll move straight to the vote. Those in favour of adopting the petition, those against, we will carry which carries item 6.1. Advice from uh, Adelaide Parklands Authority on item 7, there is nil listed. <clears throat> item 8, members, I'll take you directly to item 8.1, which is Residential Growth Action Plan. You have a recommendation to endorse. I'm in your hands, Councillor Martin. Um, Lord Mayor, I'd like to move an alternative motion, if I may. You may. Is that available on screen, Councillor Martin, or will you be reading that to your fellow members or both? Um, look, it is on screen, Lord Mayor, but given that it is an amendment, uh, or at least an alternative motion, I will, for the benefit of people in the gallery, read. Thank you, and for the benefit of your fellow members. If you could please read the alternate motion. Uh, it reads that Council 1 does not endorse the Residential Growth Action Plan 2018, Attachment A to Item 8.1 on the agenda for the meeting of Council, held on 12th of June 2018. Two endorses the advocacy items listed in the plan and asks the administration to bring back a further report to Council on how they will continue to promote the five-year free, uh, five-year rate-free incentive. Okay, so Councillor, for that alternate motion to proceed, you'll need a seconder. Councillor Hender, seconder. Floor is yours, Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, this matter, as uh, members will recall, came up in committee last week, um, and there was a, uh, a proposal at that time to tie uh, this matter with an increase in uh, on-street parking fees. And members were reluctant to agree to that, but also reluctant, I think, um, to, at this time, enter into uh, the plan as was described to us at committee and which has been described to us here in um, uh, the papers tonight. And I think the concern that was echoed by uh, many, including uh, yourself, Lord Mayor, was that it was perhaps inappropriate at this time to be proceeding with this action plan when there were so many other balls in the air, including uh, understanding the outcome of uh, Council's uh, a rate-free holiday period, which will conclude in June uh, uh, 19. Um, and therefore, this motion is designed to take the important elements out of this proposal that's before us, uh, while asking the administration to reconsider those elements that were uh, causing some discomfort for councillors, um, but also not lose sight of the need to continue to promote that five-year rate free uh, incentive and the costs associated with it. The advocacy items which uh, I am proposing that are adopted are those specifically at 11.9, 13.1, 13.2, 13.4 and 13.6 and each of them are uh, low cost or no cost uh, matters uh, including uh, ongoing um, advertising of the free rates incentive um, 
targeting and attracting global talent to work and live in the city, establishing a formal council position on migration for advocacy purposes, continued advocacy on stamp duty and other financial incentives that provide a competitive advantage to purchases of off the plan apartments, and continued investigations on the repurposing of low grade vacant commercial buildings for residential uses. Now, each of those things are, as I said, low cost or no cost, and there's an imperative that council continues that approach in order to ensure that uh, the city remains an attractive destination for new residents. Um, as I said, and I repeat again, this uh, does not mean that we abandon this plan. We are adopting tonight uh, the resolve to continue with the advocacy items and inviting the administration to come back to us at a later date with a report for that will detail uh, what costs might be associated with uh, a reform plan. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Hender, you seconded the motion. Do you care to speak to it? Yes, very briefly, Lord Mayor. I, I thank um, Councillor Martin for his um, uh, alternate motion. I think it acknowledges four things. One is it acknowledges that really in our, in our committee last week when we decided not to up our parking um, fees that we were uh, acknowledging that we're not going to be in a position to fund this plan in its entirety. And um, and one of the reasons we formed that view is because we were acknowledging that the market is actually doing a very good job of, of selling our city for us. We've got developers out there who are building, uh, building apartments for us and who are um, sinking considerable resources into selling those. Um, and so we probably don't need at this stage to interfere while that work is being done. Um, it's also an acknowledgement that we do have one strategy that is within our hands, and that is the five-year rate rebate for um, for owner occupiers, and that that strategy needs to be um, supported, and it also needs to be um, marketed um, so that people know about it. And um, from some conversations I've had today, there's been there is a direct correlation apparently between the number of people who take it up and the amount of effort and money we spend actually letting people know that it exists. So uh, it makes sense um, that Councillor Martin's paragraph two makes sense that we make sure that we're, ma we're marketing the strategy that we do have, the five year rate rebate, which is a significant attractor to the city. Um, it, it is also an acknowledgement, um, Councillor Martin's um, motion is also an acknowledgement that there is much good in this, in this strategy much good in this strategy um, and there's a lot of stuff that we can do that is is cost neutral really and we should be getting on and doing that while these other strategies take care of themselves we can of course relook at this if there's opportunities that um, budget re, re um, forecasts at uh, the end of each of our quarters and if we find there's an opportunity later to fund it but i think in deciding not to increase our parking fees which in itself is a strategy um, we acknowledge that uh, this was not going to be something that would fall into stone. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I actually won't be uh, supporting the amendment. Um, I, I agree that there's a lot of work being done in the city, um, but we took our eye off the ball a few years ago when we stopped marketing the city and stopped our projects around city living. Um, I totally endorse the advocacy around the five-year rate in free incentive, um, but we also need a more holistic plan which has been presented to us that actually talks about the city, city living, what it is to live here, and I do think that we have a job to do if we're, ever, if we're going to meet that target of 28,000. So I, I sort of, I think that, you know, taking just one bit, which is the five-year rate free incentive, you know, the reason we've got a rate free incentive, we also have to actually tell everybody why they would actually take up that rate free incentive and buy an apartment in the city. So the marketing and the plan around the marketing, I think needs to be endorsed. Um, I would uh, be very happy for shadow an amendment to consider it in QF1. Um, so it doesn't go through the budget tonight, but that we actually endorse the plan and we take it through um, in the next month or so after the um, new financial year as a uh, reconsideration of QF1. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. I've got Councillor Wilkinson followed by Councillor Aviad. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, I, um, 
uh, appreciate that we want to be seen to be uh, supporting you know, city, city growth and, and living and stuff like that. But one, as Councillor Hender said, one need only turn to the real estate pages or go to any magazine where apartment developments are promoting their uh, their uh, apartment developments to see that the five year rate holiday is being um, is actually being promoted by, by the developers themselves. And my view on this is that local government shouldn't be acting where the market does already. So the market is already spending the money promoting that. So there's no reason for us to be spending ratepayers' money doing what the market is currently doing. That's why I read on it. Uh, and, um, but I, I am aware that the current city plan is uh, that, that allows sort of very tall buildings in any location is actually having an effect of causing some people to want to sell out of their apartments because their views are going to be getting built out by other developments that are happening in their vicinity. So there are existing city residents in apartments who are selling out because other 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 apartment developments are block going to be blocking their views. So you know we, we really need to look at the city plan and see that that needs to be done in a, a way that basically gives people some surety about their investment to invest in city living because i think it's actually having uh, a counter effect where uh, where uh, people uh, have some reluctance about buying into developments knowing that at any moment some other development could pop up and spoil their their city view which is often the main one of the main motivations for buying into an apartment development. So that's I think where we need to concentrate. But but the developers are already putting investment into that promotion in my view. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Abiyat. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'll also remark I will not be supporting um, this amendment. I just want councillors to read it. Does not endorse the residential growth action plan. I mean that's what we're saying as a city. We're saying we don't support uh, growing our residential base in the city of Adelaide. That's literally what the message says. Um, and that for me is very concerning from a messaging perspective. Uh, this is like saying Coca-Cola is not going to advertise anymore because their brand just works and people are drinking it and they're selling it. For them. That's exactly what we're saying. Um, and for me, you need to find money to push for people in the city. Our business is people. <laughs> I mean, that is the fundamental business of council. It's attracting people to the city to live, to work, to be engaged, to study, to visit, for conferences. That's exactly what we do. And part of that is our residential base. Uh, it's almost just over 10% of the city visitation every day. So it's 200,000 people come to the city. We only have 23,000 people that live in the city. We have a very important job to do and we have to develop a strategy on how we attract residents to come and live in our city and create communities and families around the city of Adelaide. That's a very crucial piece of our work. I don't agree with the focus of, well, other people are doing it, why should we do it? This is our core business. And I don't think we can escape that. We need to find the money to do this. If it's not going to be in this term, um, at this part of this budget, that's fine. But it needs to stay on our radar, very high on our radar. And we need to keep focusing on that action plan because when we're talking about a residential growth action plan for the city, we're also talking about economic growth. We're talking about cultural growth. These are all things we believe in. That's why we all stood to run for this council. Um, so look, I urge members not to support this. Um, and I don't also agree um, with Councillor Hender. Uh, the reason, I mean, it's not, I don't think it's good enough that we turn around and say, uh, well, you know, we didn't, we agreed not to increase our parking fees this year, so we're not gonna support our residential growth. I mean, we can't do that. Uh, there, there is gonna be, it might be valid from a budgeting perspective, but I think, you know, we, residential growth action plan should be the top of our agenda. That's something we should really be focused on. So look, I, I ask members to not support um, the current amendment. Thank you. Councillor Maloney. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I think I might foreshadow that we um, defer this item, and I'm not sure if that's going to be problematic from a budgetary perspective. I'll get some advice on that. But um, I think, I mean, I absolutely endorse the fact that we um, have a structured campaign around <coughs> residential growth, and I think. That campaign meet needs to be a mix of um, promotion, partnerships, um, and levers 
um, that we can pull to uh, trigger demand. Um, but I, I, my, my question is around whether this plan actually will achieve the outcomes that we're looking for. I look at the plan and it uses, the actions use language like advocate, monitor, investigate, continue. And that to me is not strong enough. Um, that's my concern about this plan. I actually think the prime responsibility of the whole entire council organisation is to promote residential growth. So it sits in pockets throughout the organisation and I get that we need someone to coordinate that. Um, but I, I like to see, you know, um, you know, the state government's now reviewing its strategic plan, which we need to sort of align to. Um, and I'm not seeing um, um, enough quantitative measurement here that I think we should be bold and strive for. I think that we haven't had enough conversation about this, so I think we should workshop it a bit further. Um, and I'm not sure if that's um, uh, problematic from a process point of view. I am absolutely all for a residential growth action plan. I think it is our job to do that. I'm just not sure I love this one enough, um, personally. That's just my personal perspective, because I don't think we've had enough time to spend on it. We talked about it the other day, um, and I, it's, it's a bit more than just a bit of a marketing campaign for me. So I, well, I have said for shadow, I defer it to workshop, but I haven't. I don't know if that's problematic. At all. I'll take that as a question, Councillor Laney, CEO. Three or I mean, look, there is no time sensitivity other than the budget deliberations tonight. If you were to defer it to another date, um, it would need then to be a factor of the QF review process. So, um, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't be incorporated into this current budget as the only consequence. And I think that's the outcome that Councillor Martin's trying to achieve. I, I, I would, well, happy to put that amendment that it's deferred and it's considered for um, a um, uh, I'll accept that as a, a variation, Lord Mayor, that's fine. Councillor Mullaney, would you care to proceed with an amendment? Because we're dealing with an alternate motion from the beginning here. I'll, I'll take advice, if, whatever. Okay, whatever well, the mover is happy to accept it as a deferred item. Yes. All right, the seconder, is the seconder happy to accept this as a deferred item? Councillor Hender, do I have general comfort from the Council Chamber about deferring this item? Councillor Mullaney? Yeah, and, and just to reiterate that we, I think we think it's important. Okay, so members, in that case, we're now dealing, dealing with a, uh, uh, an amendment. Uh, to the original motion which was moved by Councillor Martin to defer. So do I have any further debate about the amendment? Because otherwise I'll put it straight to the floor. Members, those in favour of deferring this item? Those against? So we carry. The item is now deferred and it will come back to the Council Chamber in due course after a workshop of presumed CEO. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Members, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Milani. Members, uh, I'll now take you to item 8.2, which is Visitor Economy Action Plan, page 12 of your papers. You've got a recommendation to adopt, delegate and receive. Councillor Heather. Lord Mayor, I've got an, an alternate motion which should come up on the screen in a moment, which is just adding a few words to paragraph one. And if I can get a seconder for that, the words have been... Um, Could you read that out to the Council Chamber, please, so it's, Councillor it's Hendon? the visitor action plan is contained in the attachment, etc., etc., subject to a report being presented at the end of Q1 outlining clearly defined KPIs against the plan. <laughs> so, <laughs> and item two and item three remain as per the original recommendation, is that correct? Okay, so members, you've got that before you. Deputy Lord Mayor, are you seconding? You are seconding the motion put forth? Hand up first, Deputy Lord Mayor. Back to you, Councillor Hender. So the floor is yours. So again, Lord Mayor, a, a good report filled with lots of um, great initiatives. Um, but um, for me, and, and I'm channeling Councillor Romani here, measurement, measurement, measurement. Um, so I'm just really keen that we, at, by the end of Q1, have identified how we're going to measure success for each of these, uh, uh, each of the outcomes that are um, outlined in the report. Um, that's the impact of it. Um, I've spoken to Councillor, to Director Hill about it. He's content with the amendment, so um, I seek your support. 
Thank you, Councillor Hender. DLM, do you wish to speak to this matter? Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Sorry, I didn't mean to arm wrestle Councillor Malani <laughs> there. Um, I think we're all, all looking for KPIs so that we can actually measure our progress. Um, it's a, a really good report. There's a lot of work that's gone into it, and it's fantastic to see something that is so clearly directed at the visitor economy and that looks at all of those areas. Um, and so I'm very pleased that we can actually have this endorsed. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. I've got now Councillor Milani. Do you wish to speak to this matter? You had your hand up earlier. Um, I reserve my right for now, Lord Mayor. Reserving your right, I'll go to Councillor Clarahan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm very happy to endorse this. Um, it's a very holistic approach uh, to a very important, important growth area for the city. My only concern, Lord Mayor, is on page 16 under 8.2.1.2. Uh, there is absolutely no mention of additional tram services to North Adelaide, and I, I don't think that that would suit a lot of the North Adelaide businesses, um, and especially if we're promoting heritage of the city. That's another significant, given we have lots of tourist buses there already, I think it's important that we add North Adelaide to that list, so I just asked the movers if they would um, add North Adelaide to the list. I can read it out additional tram services in CBD to maximise connections between focal points, e.g. Royal Adelaide Hospital, North Terrace, East End, Hutt Street, Guja Street, Chinatown and Adelaide Central Market. And yeah. I know there are only examples, but I think it's important to get North Adelaide in Councilor there. Councillor Perrin, can I assist you in that regard? Yes. Um, what you're actually recommending there is some um, yeah. uh, addition to the commentary supporting the motion, not That's the right. motion itself. Uh, the CEO might take that on board Lotus, yeah. and then he could incorporate it so it doesn't necessarily need to be verbatim included in the happy, motion. Happy CEO, can I look to you? Yep. The CEO will do so. That's been recorded. That will be recorded in the commentary and thus the intent. Thank you, Lord. Thank Lord. you. And uh, all aboard. Well said. Um, Councillor Slami, you had your hand up. Did Lord Mayor. Thank you. I also uh, um, endorse that amendment. Um, the question through the administration, if I can, just. Just in terms of the retail component of this plan, and I uh, foreshadowed to director and associate director about my question. I um, the question is I couldn't couldn't see um, much of the retail action plan in this strategy, and the question was why, or is there any other part of your bits that feed into this? I'd like to know how that works, please. CEO. Yeah, through you, Matt. Thanks. Through the Lord Mayor. Um, this action plan really plays to the strengths of Adelaide and the differentiating um, points of Adelaide. So heritage is highlighted in there, events and festivals is highlighted in there. Um, probably from a business a retail perspective, they're secondary benefiters of the increased visitations to the city. But uh, um, in our retail strategy and our business support program, which is not highlighted specifically in here, we do run a series of sort of uh, industry development sessions for helping businesses leverage these visitors. So it's about industry development. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, Lord Mayor, I was wondering if the um, mover of the amendment would consider a variation. Um, and it's in relation to um, the visitor economy and retail in particular. I note that uh, we talk about the RAR in here, there's tourism, arts, culture, heritage, conventions, water skiing even, and trams. But I'm, I'm really missing the retail piece of the city and I do believe that it's vital to visit a growth of the city. Precincts like Rundle Mall, Central Markets, all feedback into attracting more visitors to the city. And notwithstanding the uh, the item that's hot on the agenda at the moment, but uh, in particular to the uh, the um, uh, Shop Hours Trading Act, that was the 1977 Act that talks to public holiday trading, it's worth $100 million to the city. And it attracts visitors from Adelaide, from the suburbs, from um, national and certainly the country areas into the city. And I'd like to see that brought into this um, Visitor Economy Action Plan. Um, so I've put something together, I've emailed it to Judy. Um, it seeks just for it to be varied in the recommendation point two, just at the end of that, to be added that it includes the City of Adelaide's plan to support retail trading 
especially trading on public holidays, as a means of generating greater visitation to the City of Adelaide. Okay, now Councillor Summer, let me assist you. Uh, you've got a uh, motion moved by Councillor Hender. You are asking Councillor Hender whether the, whether the Councillor would accept a variation to that motion. If you could, we don't have that received by the Secretary at this point in time, so could you please read that out slowly? Then I will look to Councillor Hender and then I'll look to the seconder, who is the Deputy Lord Mayor, about the comfort of a variation. Okay, so just at the end of point two, after it says the intent of content, full stop, maybe there a comma and continue on with the, and includes the COA, City of Adelaide's plans to support retail trading, especially trading on public holidays. Okay, just slow down, slow down, Councillor. Just repeat that first bit again, please. And includes the City of Adelaide's plans to support retail trading, especially trading on public holidays, as a means of generating greater visitation to the City of Adelaide. Seek a second well. Okay, now can you look to your screen just to ensure that's been recorded correctly? Now you, you are suggesting a variation? I just changed that a little bit there to support the unique retail offer, including trading on public holidays. Okay, full stop, I presume, after public holidays. Yep. Okay, Councillor Hender, you moved the motion. I look to you. Are you happy with that variation? Deputy Lord Mayor, I look to you as a seconder. Chamber, I look to you for general comfort with regards to that variation. Do I have it? Yes, I do. Okay, so we now have a motion as varied. Thank you, Councillor Slama. No further comment from you, Councillor. Members, do I have any further debate about this item? Councillor Mulaney. Oh, I'd like to thank Councillor Hender for adding that um, amendment and Councillor Sam. Um, I think KPIs are, you know, a, a great, I guess one of my questions is because there's a lot of partnerships involved with, you know, this um, strategy. Um, and I'm just wondering um, how, I mean, uh, maybe uh, I'm just thinking about how, you know, we greater, greater enhance, you know, the, because we don't have to do everything ourselves. This, this strategy is very much based around partnerships. Um, so I guess I'm just going to make a comment that those partnerships are really important. It would be nice to a, a learn what's working and what doesn't work, and that will come through measuring. But to um, really identify, you know, who's good at doing what as part of these partnerships and how we can further that collaboration. And um, because I note that there's so many different players to deliver this strategy. Um, so I just, you know, want to just put that up front. That there's got to be some opportunity to make sure we bring those people together on a regular basis. Thank you, Councillor. Members, Councillor Martin. Oh, look, just uh, very briefly, Lord Mayor, um, it's worth noting that this plan uh, formally uh, moves this council away from the former state government's uh, vision for a contemporary gallery on the site of the old RA. And we now, as at 8.2.2.2, uh, officially support a national gallery for Aboriginal art and culture on that site. And that is a significant step forward and one which I, uh, I welcome, and I'm sure everyone in this chamber does. Noted, Councillor Martin. Members, any further debate? I'm going back to the mover and Councillor Hender. Summing up? Summed up, Lord Mayor. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Members, we've carried item 8.2. Members, item, item 8.3, business mission to China, July 2018, page 133 of your papers. Uh, members, I would need to do this with you in two parts because I would require a procedural motion, which would largely be the recommendation, and then I would need a nomination thereafter. So, Councillor Clarehan. Are you asking for the first two parts? I'm asking for the procedural motion, yes, which would be the first part, prior to which time I would then call for nomination. Yes. Okay, do I have a second, members? Deputy Lord Mayor. 
Members, any debate about the procedural? Summing up, Councillor Clarehan, I put this before you, members. Those in favour, those against, we noted, we carry. And members, I now require a, um, a nomination. Councillor Clarehan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I nominate Councillor David Slummer. Okay, Councillor Slummer, do you accept, should the nomination be successful? Yes. Okay, members, do I have any further nominations? Councillor Slammer, I require you to leave the chamber, please. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. Now, members, I would require a, um, a motion uh, for Councillor uh, Slammer to attend the trade delegation. Moved by Councillor Wilkinson, seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. Members, do I have any debate or questions or queries? I don't. I'll put that direct to the floor. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried. Item 8.3 thus carried. If we could please invite Councillor Slammer back into the chamber, please, Ed. Nihau, Councillor Slummer. <laughs> Members, item 8.4, 2018 LGA Annual General Meeting, page 138 of your papers. Uh, it is a report to note. Moved by Councillor Hender, as printed, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. Any questions or queries with regards to this item, Members? You've got a question or query, Councillor Clarehan? No, I just wanted to say Certainly, yep, it's a matter to note, so that's not to debate, but questions or queries or I commentary I understand, well. Lord Mayor, that um, it is a matter to note. Um, and interestingly, uh, Adelaide, City of Adelaide put up more motions than any other council on, on this occasion. And, ooh, <laughs> was that something I said? <laughs> Very exciting matter, clearly. Uh, So much for spilling the beans. Um, Lord Mayor, I just wanted to say that we were actually quite successful in um, getting endorsement um, for our motions. The only, uh, including um, picking up on the um, the heritage issue and consistency, uh, consistent policy and procedure in terms of um, approach across the whole state. Uh, and as Councillor Wilkinson um, pointed out earlier, there does seem to be a lot of inconsistency. And so um, I was fortunate enough to be able to convince uh, those in attendance that yes, there was a lot to be gained uh, in working on a consistent policy and approach, which I think will also reinforce the earlier uh, motion that we had in relation and, and the way uh, the subject matter that Council, uh, Professor Norm Etherington addressed us on tonight. Uh, the only one that I really failed on was the issue around uh, getting support for the car share motion. And I think the problem there is that, you know, there aren't a lot of council areas uh, that do actually have the um, car share programs. Um, and I think I might have caught some, some Lord Mayor said they're asleep at the wheel, so to speak, um, and would otherwise would have seconded it. But uh, that was the only one we missed out on. And I think we can work on that down the track when a few more councils are actually um, also <laughs> partaking of those car share programs. And thank you for representing the City of Adelaide, Councillor Clarehan. Greatly appreciated, as always. So, Members, do I have any further debate about this matter? Councillor Hender? Just to very briefly sum up, Lord Mayor, and Councillor um, Clarehan's taken the wind out of my sails a little bit because I did want to thank Councillor Clarehan for the way she uh, is approaching our relationship or helping us manage our relationship with the LGA. That deeper engagement that is obviously paying dividends and um, that's very much down to the, the work that Councillor Cohan is putting in. And it does show, at a time when we've had some debate in this chamber about the value or not value of being part of the LGA, I think this is one of the examples of where we can see the value of doing it, where we can get a consistent approach across council areas, where things that we put up and through Councillor Clarehan 
um, seek the support of others, um, where we not just get um, an outcome for our city, but we get it for the city of Adelaide, um, but we also get an outcome for the metropolitan area more generally. So I think it's um, it's great work, and I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hender. So members, I put this report before you to note. Those in favour? Those against? We note the report, we carry the report. Thank you very much. Members, we now have item 8.5, which is page 153 of your papers. I must say your voluminous papers, <coughs> members. Annual review of delegations 2018, a report to note and adopt. Councillor Hender, you are moving as printed. Do I have a second of members? Councillor Slama. Councillor Hender, do you wish to speak to the matter? Yeah, Councillor Slama. Members, I look to you. Any questions, queries or debate? Councillor Hender, back to you. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Thus, CEO, you have your delegations. Pleasure. Item 8.6, Strategic Plan and Integrated Business Plan Reporting, Quarter 3, Current Financial Year, page 442, a report to note. I look to you, members. For a mover. Moved by Councillor Slama, seconded by Councillor Aviad. Councillor Slama, do you wish to speak to the matter? Reserve my right. Councillor Aviad. Thank you. Members, questions, queries, comments or debate? Councillor Martin. Yeah, a question, Lord Mayor. Um, item 4.1 on page 444, we're whipping through this, by the way, 444, um, records that in QF3, uh, the report that was due at the end of QF2, a procurement plan for all council vehicles to be low or zero emissions has been completed. And then it says at five, there will now be no further update to elected members because the action has been completed. Is it the intention of the administration to bring the procurement plan to council for consideration or debate? So you yeah, take that question. Through Lord Mayor, I'll just take a little notice if I can. I'd like to do some work on it and come back to Council. Uh, oh. It would be very unusual if the plan was completed and it didn't ever touch the Council at all. Sure. Thank I'll you. take a little notice and most likely we'll come back to Council. Thank you, Councillor Martin. The CEO will take that matter on notice and come back to all Councillors, including yourself, in a timely matter. Members, do we have any further questions, queries or debate? In absence of, I'm going to take you back to the mover of the said motion, Councillor Slama. Councillor Slama? Summer. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. I'm going to presume that Councillor Mullaney and Councillor Wilkinson were in the chamber when we were voting on that and their hands were right up in the air. Yeah. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, members, we now move to Legislated Bylaw Review 8.7, page 445, to approve and authorise. Councillor Mullaney, moving. Do I have a second, please, members? Councillor Clarehan, Councillor Mullaney, do you wish to speak to this matter? Uh, no, Lord Mayor, I think it's straightforward, but just a question. Um, does this include uh, candidates that are campaigning for uh, the upcoming election that they need a permission for an A-frame to be placed on the street? Here, here, Councillor Mullaney. Uh, so you're, Same one floating around. Please right? answer that question, that incredibly important pressing matter which we must be addressed right now for public good. Clear, thank you. <laughs> um, through the presiding member, um, yes it does, Councillor. Requires a permit. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you, Councillor Mullaney. Um, Councillor Clarehan, you second the motion. Do you wish to speak to it? Members, I look to you. Councillor Hender. I just wanted to ask a brief question, um, Lord Mayor, about some of the things, um, some of the uh, editing um, have been removed to bring in uh, bring <coughs> in line with Legislative Council, the Local News and Litter Control Act. But they're actually deletions. Does that mean that the the things that have been deleted from our um, bylaws are picked up by legislation now. Is that is that what's going on? Through the, through the presiding member, that is correct. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Hinder. Does that answer your question? It does. 
So, members, any further debate, questions, or queries regarding 8.7? Councillor Mullaney. Thank you, members. I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against, we carry 8.7, which takes us on to public submissions on the draft of the 2018 2019 Integrated Business Plan, page 508, <laughs> item 8.8, .8, to receive a note. Do I have a move, please, members? Councillor Hender, seconded by Councillor Martin. Any questions, members? Yeah. Councillor Clarehan, question? Only to say that um, I'm really disappointed in the number of responses. I think, um, given the size of our budget uh, and the nature of our business, uh, one would ex expect uh, a much uh, more, um, well, a much a more increased response. And I think I've mentioned it before, but I think it's certainly worth us reviewing um, the way in which we present information to members of the public and our ratepayers um, in order for them to be able to understand and participate more in the process. And I look forward to um, that being raised uh, in the next round of budget, review, uh, budget consultations with a question mark on the end. Well done, Councillor. Um, Councillor Wilkinson. Um, can we any way of identifying how effective people's public submissions on the budget have been in past occasions? Because one of the reasons for the small number of submissions may be that people feel that, uh, that it doesn't make any difference to, to the budget and therefore they're wasting their time because Council won't actually change their course on account of their submission. So is there some way that we're able to uh, ascertain um, the influence that past budget submissions have made? Because if we could communicate to broader community, you know, tangible examples of where budget submissions have been made and, and council has changed its course further to receiving those submissions, then people might feel a bit more Courage to actually put in a submission knowing that it stands a reasonable chance of having some effect. Question. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. CEO. Steve. Um, through you, Lord Mayor, I'm not in a position, obviously, at the moment, to take that on notice and come back to you with any information we could. We obviously do have, um, from my recollection, in relation to the last budgets, there was obviously some feedback that did affect members' decisions, but I'm happy to bring that information back as a separate item. Thank you, information. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Members, any further? In absence of, I take you back to Councillor Hender. Lord Mayor, I do just want to speak just uh, briefly in um, support of our consultation, and I take Councillor uh, Clarehan's point. But I do think, you know, we, when you think about what our process is all about, we do an enormous amount of consultation at the beginning of our term of as councillors, and we adopt a strategic plan that has had an enormous amount of input an enormous amount of input from our community. And that to me is where the consultation should take place and that's where the consultation does take place. I know that legislative, we also have to, we have to uh, consult on each business plan and budget. But our business plan and budget are really simply devices to give life to the strategic plan, which is where the work is done, I think. And so I, I think that, that the important work is done at the, at the front of, of the process every four years. And then our business plan budget is really just a recognition of that and making sure that it it's actually plays itself out. I think perhaps, maybe I'm being a bit Pollyanna-ish, maybe it's because people can see that we're actually doing what we said we're gonna do in our plan. Here it is, we're doing it. And you know that's what we said we we're gonna do and we're doing it. Um, I, I, and just in answer to um, any, uh, Councillor Wilkinson's question, there was one thing that I really remember and that was 10 gig. And that started as a, as a, as a feedback from some consultation when we had a speaker come in and say, have you thought about this? And we really did that, not just changed our business plan and budget, that changed our strategic plan. So I think that there are times when people do come with some big ideas that can, um, that can captivate us. Um, and I'm not, it's not to say that this, the other ideas shouldn't be taken into account. But the real work for consultation for a council should start at the beginning of a term. I'm saying this deliberately because we've got a new term coming up. And I think that the work we do there is so important at the beginning of a new term, making sure that that's when we hear the voices of our community, really hear the voices of our community so that we can embed something that lasts for four years for them. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Members, I put this matter before you. 8.8, .8. those in favour?
Those against, we carry 8.8, .8, which takes us directly on to 8.9, 2018 Integrated Business Plan Review of General Operations Fees and Charges, page 548, a recommendation to adopt and note. I look to you, members. Councillor Hender, as printed, seconded by Councillor Slama. Councillor Hender, do you wish to speak to the matter? Uh, no, Lord Mayor, other than to point out that in most cases it's a zero increase or CPI. Councillor Slama. Uh, Members, I look to you. Questions, queries or debate? Councillor Wilkinson. Um, just further to our discussion on the SAC committee last week, I'm just um, wanting to flag my intention at the next available council meeting. Um, I was considering an amendment in the interest of passing the budget through tonight um, uh, and giving the opportunity for administration to provide some feedback and work on this. I'm looking to um, have some of our parking, on street parking charges significantly reduced in areas where no one is parking, like, like Sturt Street, where less than 10 percent of car parks actually have got a car in them. So, but, but I understand from speaking with um, Vanessa Godden, our car parking um, manager, that um, uh, uh, if they're given some opportunity to um, to, to do some research and the impacts of, on, uh, on the take up and budget of that, then they'll be able to uh, uh, do that. Sorry if I got the title wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Everyone's dropping something today. Um, members, do I have any further debate about this item? I don't see any hands. I'm going to take you back to Councillor Hinder. Members, I'll put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against, we carry item 8.9, which takes us on to the Runnable Management Authority 2018-19 Integrated Business Plan, page 587, to note and approve. Would you like to take advice on that, Councillor Mulani? Can we please have procedural advice with all Councillor Mulani? Can Councillor Mulani remain in the room, Rudy? Through Lord Mayor, the ordinary business exemption applies, so you can indeed stay in the room. So, members, I require a mover. You probably can. Moved by Councillor Hender, seconded by Councillor Mullaney. Councillor Hender, do you wish to speak for the matter? Do, Mara. Am I in the room? Yes, Mara. I'll take procedural advice. Rudy, Councillor Mullaney can stay in the room. Can Councillor Mulaney second the motion and vote on the motion? I presume that she can. She can fully participate, I presume, but we'd take advice on that, Councillor Mulaney. That's right. Um, indeed, the ordinary business exemption applies, which means that you can participate in the debate and vote. So, moved by Councillor Hender. Councillor Hender, did you wish to speak to the matter? Councillor Mulaney, did you wish to speak to the matter? Members, I look to you. Questions, queries or debate with regards to item 8.10. I go back to the mover. Councillor Hender, summed up. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Carried 8.10, which takes us to item a late 8.11. Uh, members, approval of Adelaide Central Market Authority 2018-19 Integrated Business Plan, page 623. You have a recommendation to approve. Councillor Wilkinson has his hand up as the mover. Councillor Slama is the seconder. Councillor Wilkinson, do you wish to speak to the matter? Um, no, I just uh, uh, support the, um, the motion. I'd like to, to thank Aaron Rumney for his great service to this organisation at this junction. Members, I think that actually deserves a round of applause. Thirty-minute speech by Mr. Brumby. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Slama, you seconded the matter. Do you wish to speak to it? Okay. Members, I look to you. Councillor Wilkinson, back to you. Hello. Members, I put this matter for your consideration. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. Thank you. Thank you to both of our subsidiaries on both of those matters, I must say. Greatly appreciated. Members, I take you on to the 2018-2019 Integrated Business Plan Adoption, page 661. You have a recommendation to note and adopt. I look to the floor. 
Moved by Councillor Maloney, moving as printed, seconded by Councillor Hender. Councillor Maloney, you wish to speak to the matter? You might reserve my right for then. Reserving your right? Yes. Certainly you can. Councillor Hender. Sorry, Members, I look to the floor. Councillor Maloney, I come back to you. Well, I think it's worthy of just some acknowledgement of the hard work that's gone into the development of the business plan and budget um, and um, from councillors and staff administration. Um, and um, this will carry this council through the next financial year into a new term of council. Um, and um, so I'd just like to acknowledge the hard work that's gone into it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Maloney. Um, members, I put this matter before you, 8.12, those in favour, those against. We carry, Director Matthewson is now breathing. <laughs> members, I take you to, and I echo those comments, well said, Councillor Maloney. Uh, members, item 8.13, adoption of valuations for the 2018-19 financial year, page 737 to adopt. Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Slama. Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to the matter? Right. Councillor Slama. Reserve right. Members, questions, queries or debate? Back to you, Councillor Martin. Right. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Members, declaration of rates, 2018-2019 financial year, pay 741 to note, declare and resolve. Do I have a mover? Moved by Councillor Martin. Seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to the matter? Right. Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, I look to you. Deputy Lord Mayor, you reserved your right. Do you wish to speak to the matter? Yeah. Councillor Martin is the mover. Summing up? Summing up, Lord Mayor. I put this matter before you, members. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Which takes us on to 8.15, Declaration of Rundamore Separate Rate 2018-19, page 747 to note and declare. Moved by Councillor Malani, seconded by Councillor Martin. Councillor Malani, do you wish to speak to the matter? Just noting, Lord Mayor, as with the rates, that there's no um, increase in the rate in the dollar for the Rundamore levy. Well done, Councillor Martin. Uh, right. Members, questions, queries or debate? Councillor Martin, you reserved your right. Councillor Maloney, back to you as a mover. Summed up. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 815. Members, this takes us directly. Emerging key risks, CEO, nil. Well done again. <laughs> Question on notice, item 9.1. Our CEO is a risk free zone, members. We are very lucky to have this man. <laughs> question on notice, Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, would you like to take your question as read or would you like to read your question out? Uh, as read, I'm happy to do it by um, as read. Okay. Thank you. So, members, you have the response if anyone in the gallery or the media would like a copy of said answer to said question on notice, please put your hand up and it will be brought to you and we'll move on to the next item. So thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, that takes us to a number of, no, it doesn't, it takes us to item 10, which is questions without notice. Do I have any? Councillor Aviad. Just a brief one, Lord Mayor, just uh, regarding um, Highley Street um, and just the incident that happened a couple of days ago. Um, has the administration uh, received any information with regards uh, to that incident and have we potentially looked at any opportunities to assist um, in providing um, safer environments for uh, uh, patrons in Highley Street, especially around speed limiting or um, reducing speeds of vehicles in the area? Thank you, Councillor Aviat. CEO. I might prefer to clear up the thanks. Through the presiding member, if I could ask Sean McNamara um, to come up. Um, Sean's been uh, briefed on that re more recently than I have, so he's probably got more up-to-date information. Thanks, Sean.
Through you, Lord Mayor, uh, yes, members of my team met with police this morning to talk about um, Hindley Street more broadly, a number of incidents, including the one uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, and we did discuss uh, at a preliminary uh, level some options that could be taken uh, to make the streets safer. We'll do some more work on that uh, with police uh, over the coming weeks and, uh, and bring that back to council as soon as possible. Thank you, Councillor Aviat. Members, do I have any further questions without notice? Councillor Slammer. Thank you. Uh, question on notice. Um, how many motorcycle parks have currently been created? And what is the status of any further zones um, coming coming to us? So, Councillor, this is a question without notice, so we'll take it as a question without notice. CEO, if you're able to answer that question. Uh, Beth, can you answer that? Yes. Uh, sure, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Slama, the exact number of motorcycle um, parks that have been created, I will take on notice. The second part of your question, what plans? There were several other areas identified for additional motorcycle parking, as I, I think you're aware. The community engagement to date has not been supportive of those additional spaces, um, but we are revisiting those as well as looking for others quite actively. So we can keep you fully up to date. Does that answer your question, Councillor Slama? It does. Any further questions without notice, members? Councillor Hinder. Um, just to add to um, uh, Director Davidson Park's um, workload, could I ask a similar question about bike parks and um, bike facilities? Um, to how many there are, have been already provided and what plans are for further ones for future parking bike facilities to take on notice? Public, public. What are they called? Bike racks. Bike racks. Oh, right, yeah, that's true, you look there. Absolutely, we'll take that on notice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Members, any further questions without notice before I move on? I don't see any hands, so I shall. Members, we now go to motions on notice. Your first motion on notice, item 11.1, .1, Councillor Wilkinson, motion on notice regarding Donovan Kima Heritage Investigations, page 751. Councillor, the floor is yours. Thank you. To um, move. I move the motion, Donovan Rick Kima Heritage Investigation. Um, take it as a second. As printed, I have a seconder, and your seconder is Councillor Martin. The floor is yours, Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, recently, we had um, sponsored a visit from Donovan Rick Kima from Washington, D.C., uh, to speak about the economics of heritage. And I think all of those who are involved in hearing his. Uh, um, uh, his investigations from a global perspective, um, and looking at Adelaide from from uh, from an international perspective, could see the potential there. And um, uh, we've also had some approach from the uh, Dunstan Foundation, who are very interested in uh, uh, pursuing um, him being invited over as a thinker in residence. And given that one of Adelaide's greatest strengths is its historic. Um, character and heritage, um, it's a real opportunity for us to um, to uh, garner maximum um, uh, leverage out of uh, out of his his work, which is truly international. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Seconded by Councillor Martin. Do you wish to speak to the matter? Oh, only briefly, Lord Mayor, to say that uh, I endorse Councillor Wilkins' intentions. Um, as so far as we know, as the administration has observed in the papers supplied tonight. Uh, the value of heritage to this city in terms of tourism and income is around $375 million. And Mr. Ripkema's view was that that was a fairly low figure capable of being increased substantially. And therefore, this represents an opportunity for us to explore that uh, at fairly limited cost. And I'm just uh, delighted to hear that the Dunstan Foundation is interested in the proposal that Councillor Wilkinson has put forward, and I'd ask members to support it. Thank you, Councillor. Members, I don't see a further show of hands, so I'm going to take you back to the mover, Councillor Wilkinson. Members, I put this matter, item 11.1, .1, motion on notice from Councillor Wilkinson before you. Those in favour? Those against? 11.1 .1 carried. 11.2, Councillor Wilkinson, motion on notice, exercise equipment, Rumble Park. Councillor? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, on a completely different topic, exercise equipment in Rumble Park. Um, our administration comments uh, notes that we have exercise equipment in Victoria Park, 
I had some uh, approach from uh, residents in the East End who um, made suggestions about having... Councillor, before you debate... Oh, I, you, my apologies. You, I you move the uh, motion in my name. Okay. Fine specimen. I look for a seconder. Councillor Hender, back to Councillor Wilkinson to debate exercise equipment. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Um, we were talking about the appeal of city living and stuff before, and, uh, and it was a city apartment dweller that made a suggestion to me about um, providing exercise equipment for adults in the vicinity of our children's play equipment in Wildwood Park. And it seemed to me a very sensible idea, and the existing exercise equipment habits in Victoria Park was a long way away for people who live around the East End where we try to encourage people to move into the city and um, it also enables parents to actually exercise whilst their children are playing on the equipment and uh, uh, it seems a sensible, sensible suggestion and I understand that we've got uh, a master plan for Rival Park uh, in train at the moment so it's an opportune time to incorporate this idea that has come from our own residents. Thank you Councillor. Councillor Hender, you second. Members, I look to you. Questions, queries, or debate? I haven't. Councillor Abiyad? Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I don't, um, as long as they're not heritage equipment, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, look, I think it's, um, uh, look, I think it's worthwhile exploring. Uh, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing there not to investigate. I think, look, you know, let's investigate it. Uh, the question there, I guess, um, will we be asking, um, I guess the residents in the area, their thoughts, or do we have any sort of undertaking? Because this is sort of a, um, a one-off thing for that specific area. We don't really have a plan around rolling out uh, some of that stuff in Rome Park. So what would the process look like? like would there be, when we say investigate, is it just us looking at costs or looking at speaking to residents in the area or? See you. Through Lord Mayor, I imagine that the, um the development of the master plan will go through a consultation process. Okay. We can incorporate this suggestion within the master planning awesome. process. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, with that, I'm happy to support it. Thank you. Members, no further debate. Councillor Wilkinson, back to you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Councillor Abia. Yeah, now having um, used the, um, the, the exercise equipment associated with the playground equipment with my own young family, I can see that benefits of this for our parents and, and, and older adults alike. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 11.2. Item 11.3, Councillor Wilkinson, motion on notice, measures to address heritage issues in North Adelaide, page 753 of your papers. Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, this uh, motion I move and I seek a second of Moved, uh, seconded by Councillor Martin. Back to you, Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, this uh, motion comes further to the um, response that we got to the uh, um, uh, the nine buildings that were put up by us for local heritage listing in North Adelaide, of which, when evaluated, evaluated against the current criteria by the Minister's Committee, they found that none of the nine met the criteria, which begged the question whether there's something wrong with the criteria if the evaluation gains some results in none of the buildings that the community is seeking to be protected actually being afforded that protected. So from my experience of dealing with the local heritage criteria since the inception of the Development Act in 1993 and observing how the criteria is assessed by different heritage consultants, the intention of this is to actually take out some of the ambiguity which has resulted in nearly identical buildings some being listed by some consultants and others being not recommended by other consultants so in order to achieve a consistency. And Donovan Ripkema in his talk um, to us in uh, right above us um, spoke about the imperative of consistency of heritage listing so that you have similar similar um, uh, rules applying to, uh, to similar properties rather than the uh, inconsistent results that we are currently experiencing. Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor, and I thank uh, Councillor Wilkinson for this motion. It is really important, and in fact, I, I think it's probably one of the most important things we're dealing with tonight. Submissions were last made to the state government on uh, this matter two years ago, according to the administration, and we have had those extraordinary circumstances that Councillor Wilkinson referred to quite recently, where uh, nine historic buildings were deemed to be of no particular worth. Um, and, and I guess for me, what was really disturbing was that 
both the new minister and one of the planning commissioners claimed that just because the buildings didn't have a local heritage listing or protection anymore, they were safe from demolition. And moreover, that somehow the North Adelaide Historic Conservation Zone status uh, that applies to the whole of the suburb protected them. And they were wrong on both counts. They got it seriously wrong. And so if we have a government and a planning commissioner who don't understand what the levers are that are available to protect buildings, we have a real problem. And it's illustrated also by 306 Ward Street, which Councillor Wilkinson has been uh, arguing uh, about for some time and uh, which uh, there is a, a strong public following for a, uh, a petition in the public realm, which the Lord Mayor may know about. Uh, in that case, a building that once had heritage protection somehow just lost it and it is about to be demolished. It's going to be demolished for a hospital ward, not incorporated in any design, but just levelled. Now, uh, if the nature of local heritage listing um, it is so impossible to define, then we need as a council to articulate what we think are the community expectations, as Councillor Wilkinson asks in, in his motion. Because out there in the real world, among residents and ratepayers, there is a real concern that somewhere, somehow, we've lost the plot on heritage. Uh, and when you consider that the reasons that were put forward for not listing those nine historic buildings, like the Lowy Library building, it had a portico added, it had windows added, or changed and maybe a wall disappeared and the Finner Street cottages weren't worthy. Uh, one, one explanation was because they were behind a fence and no one could see them. Now these, these are just nonsense proposals and they don't stand any kind of rigour. In fact as uh, Professor Etherington said earlier today, if we actually want to preserve heritage buildings they will change. They've got to change over time in order to comply with all of the standards that we expect of buildings that are, uh, are being used for business or for residents. So uh, I thank Councillor Wilkinson for this. I really ask everyone to support it. I think this is the first step in us mounting a clear, articulate argument about what's wrong with the process for listing uh, local heritage buildings. Thank you, Councillor. Members, do I have any further questions, queries or debate? Councillor Milani. I have a query, Lord Mayor, please, on um, the process around this, given that it would require, this is a, am I correct, this is a legislative, a request for a legislative change, and and the wording itself, can we get some advice on, if I take this as correct, we're asking you, Lord Mayor, or if we're up to the right to the um, Minister, requesting a legislative change and with this specific wording. Can I get some clarity on that? That's my understanding as your presiding member. This is an advocacy piece for uh, change to legislation. And CEO, can you please confirm that? Please? With, with this specific wording, I guess, is the question. Yeah, three will be, that's right. If it's a motion of council, that's what we will undertake. I guess I'm just checking that the, the wording is, you know, fits. Just get some advice on that. Thank you. Uh, through the presiding member, uh, the wording in this motion is consistent um, with some of us, um, some of council's previously endorsed suggestions to heritage reform developed as part of um, our response to um, the 2016 heritage um, reform papers um, released by DIPTI. So this is consistent. Thank you, Councillor Milani. Members, I see no further hands, so I take you back to your mover, Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I think the, the Minister uh, indicated in the, in the media comments that his expectation was that these buildings, and therefore hope, would be that these buildings would be protected. I think that's very telling. But, you know, it was obviously that the criteria, as assessed by his, his committee, was what was, um, was the impediment to the expectation that the Minister himself had. And when I did a face, an open Facebook post with some photographs of these buildings asking people whether they believe they should be protected or permitted to be demolished, um, uh, the, there was a resounding, virtually unanimous response for seeking protection. And I would put that out in a very open 
opens it away to the public to, to, to get a bit of a gauge of, of public sentiment on that. So uh, I think it's important that um, local heritage protection actually does reflect people's expectations of what they want to see protected from being demolished. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 11.3. Item 11.4, Councillor Wilkinson, motion on notice, Calvary Hospital, North Adelaide Development, page 755. Thank you again, Lord Mayor. Um, we have been um, looking at the Calvary Hospital situation where due to the potential for colleges and institutions to be able Councillor, to Councillor, your moving is printed, I again, move, move uh, the motion is printed. And second. you have a second to it, Councillor Martin, so we now go back to you, Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, Due to the capacity under the previous planning minister's um, uh, cap, um, uh, colleges and institutions, DPAs, um, any of one of those organisations could purchase property next door to them or even across the road from them and have their rules apply to them. Um, and this has created some perverse outcomes and no more so here where a residential property um, has been purchased by Calvary Hospital, and um, and again clearly uh, the um, the public outcry at the potential demolition of this beautiful building, which has been modified in a way that could never be brought back to as it was in 1850, but actually the way it's been um, done in the Art Nouveau style with a very flamboyant parapet is really quite exquisite, and and I had studied my honours in. The significance of accretions, and I would describe this as a significant accretion. That the way that this building has been changed um, is significant, and worthy of protection in its own right. Um, the, um, uh, the it's one thing for us to affirm our previous position, which is the first part of the motion, which is important that we do that. But um, logistically, if Calvary are to actually develop part of their own site and therefore make the same investment. Um, there's no way that they could do it with their current car park without having with nowhere for 80 old cars where they exist their own staff park. It would be logistically possible for them to do. So the purpose of the second part of this motion is actually for council to provide an opportunity for them to have permit parks dedicated to their staff so they can actually move, clear that site and actually develop that part of their own site. And then that gives them the opportunity to uh, to um, develop behind the um, the um, the uh, 306 Ward Street, which is what the community is, is wanting to see happen. I think uh, people are accepting that the hospital will move in and utilise that 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 site, but not losing the beautiful residential building that is on that site, which could easily accommodate um, the sort of uses that they've got particularly if they've got the opportunity to redevelop their own car park site. So that's the, that's the intention of this uh, motion. And my um, how I had envisaged is that um, if this motion was successful, that um, uh, then we would you know, make the overture to Calvary at the earliest opportunity to give them the opportunity to, um, to consider an alternate course uh, rather than waiting until some British DPA process, which would, I think, the timing is important that we need to actually <coughs> have that conversation with them uh, if this motion is successful um, as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Martin, you seconded. Right. Reserving your right. Councillor Milani. I have a question, Lord Mayor. I have no problem with uh, point one. Point two, um, I'm just wondering um, A, where this pro these proposed 80 cars would be parked. Um, and to what precedent are we setting here? Are we going to do deals with all development in the future? Yeah, if you, we'll give you this, we'll give you some car parking. I'm just wondering, I'm concerned about what precedent does this set? Thank you, Councillor. So point three talks about the car parking. Uh, CEO? Claire, thanks. Uh, through the presiding member, um, members may remember um, the offer um, to St Andrews um, Hospital in uh, the southern part of the city um, to enable their staff to park on street during the construction and duration of the um, redevelopment at St Andrews on South Terrace. So um, I would um, consider this a similar 
um, opportunity um, and as the admin comment um, indicates we would bring back um, the options around what on street parking solution could look like so council understood um, what that meant. My, my question is actually about not giving offering parking it's about doing a deal that's the precedent that we're setting here we're saying we'll give you car parking in return for you agreeing to heritage list this property now I fully appreciate your intent here, but I'm, it's not about offering the car parking. It's about, are we in the business of doing these kind of deals? I'm just wondering what precedent that's setting. Can I assist with that before I hand to you, Director Mockler? Um, I think the decision would ultimately be made by Calvary, uh, whether they'd find this acceptable or not. The heritage listing would be a ministerial de decision, which is related, but not exactly. So it would be Calvary's decision to make whether they would accept the car parking. It's a quid pro quo, I understand. Is that correct, Claire? Does that assist? Thank you, Lord Mayor. That's correct. Um, and it will be a decision of Calvary um, and any on-street impacts would come back to the Chamber. Did that answer your question, Councillor Maloney? Yeah, I'll give, I'll give kudos to Councillor Wilkinson for uh, the uniqueness of it. Members, any further debate? Councillor Wilkinson, back to you. Uh, yes, look, I am um, working in the construction sector myself. I <coughs> understand the logistics of, of this sort of exercise. And uh, if um, it's one thing for us to say, no, we don't want this to happen, and, and us to say, no, we really, really don't want this to happen. But that really isn't going to change anything for Calvary unless we can actually offer something tangible that actually enables um, the sort of solution which the community would like to see happen and which would fulfil Calvary's um, objectives ultimately as well. Thank you, Councillor. Members, I put item 11.4 before you. Those in favour? Those against, we carry. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Can I commend you on the clarity of your debate on all four items? Well done. Members, item 11.5 has been withdrawn, which I presume may be moved at a later date by Councillor Antic, who is an apology for this evening. Takes us on to, on to item 11.6. Councillor Milani, motion on notice, new business registered on the electoral roll, page 785. Councillor Milani. Thank you, Lord, I'll move this Members, I look for a seconder. Councillor Hender is the seconder. The floor is yours, Councillor Mulaney. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you to the administration for, um, we. Uh, well, they released uh, an e-news about the campaign where they're reporting to write to all of the um, businesses and those that are um, not on the electoral roll, that includes some non-residents, uh, some residential, sorry. Um, and, um, and so I really would like us to test to see how this works. Um, the, the challenge is that actually the process of getting on the electoral roll is clunky. You have to download a form, fill it in, bring it in, you know, or, or send it off. Um, and that's, that's one of the greatest difficulties, I think, for businesses to get on the electoral roll, um, or those that are not automatically on it. Um, and these, the types of um, issues that we deal with on council really affect business and they really should be better engaged and have a say. Um, my personal belief is that there is something better we can do all year round to be engaging new businesses and encouraging them to get on the roll, not just in an eight week campaign, quick the electoral roll closes on the 10th of August. Have you got your um, name in? Because we're gonna, we're gonna send them a letter and then they probably take a week to read it and then they've got to go onto the website and then they've got to download a form and then they've got to fill in that form and then they've got to send it off. I can tell you right now, I, I'm not convinced that it's going to be a great success. So I would like us to trial, uh, to, to, to bring back a report to see how many new businesses are actually um, following that process. I think um, it would be nice to see us do this 365 days of the year, um, engaging new businesses that, that um, are in the city. So, um, but I just want the data so we can make better decisions in the future. Thank you, Councillor. Seconded by Councillor Hender. Do you wish to speak to them? Members, I look to you. DLM. Uh, 
Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Just just on that point is, I mean, obviously it's a bit late in the piece, but can we or are we investigating putting that registration online so that we can actually make the process simple? See you. Thanks, Lou. Through you, Lord Mayor, yeah, we are looking at the options to try and automate the process at the moment. We have actually got a prototype in relation to both the application and the testing that was part of a prior motion through the Chamber um, to test whether people are actually on the roll um, and we'll actually bundle it up and look at options to actually automate the process as much as possible. Members, do I have any further debate? Councillor Clareham. Thank you, Lord Mayor. My understanding is that the City of Adelaide actually has uh, quite a reasonable system in place already uh, compared to other councils where people do have to re-register, but we retain people on the roll. Is that not true? Right. We'll take that as a question. CEO, Director Matthewson. Thanks, Steve. Yes. Yes, that's correct. So really it's about attracting any new businesses to ensure that they are registered? Correct. It's about any changes that have occurred. Yes. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm quite happy about this, and I think um, I certainly don't mind us monitoring the increase in the number of new um, businesses registered. Uh, my question is in relation to um, what about the number of enrolments or to vote? of residents, new residents in the city. Um, would it not be wise for us to also um, also comment on that? I'm sure it wouldn't be hard for administration to let us know how many new residents uh, we have in the city uh, who are actually enlisting to vote. And I understand there's been quite a few of late. So is it not possible to also give us those figures as well? No, they're not. We'll take that as a question. Well, let's take it as a question. Director Matthewson. Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'd need to double check the exact process for that, if I could, Councillor, and I'm quite prepared to come out with an update on this process um, in this week for members. Um, just for clarification, uh, my understanding is you don't have to be on the electoral roll. Um, as a citizen to vote for uh, to vote in local government elections. That is correct. That is correct. Thank that you. is correct. Yes. Um, Councillor Abia. Just a quick question. Just to provide clarity, if you are on the electoral roll, you automatically right. register to vote for council elections. And if you own a property through our rateable database, you automatically register as well through the supplementary roll. So what we're focusing on here is pretty much small businesses and other businesses that <coughs> probably have no idea what a supplementary role is and how to get on. But my understanding is that what I heard tonight is consistent, but previously businesses could register online to vote at the council election through the website. Isn't that correct? Can someone confirm that? I'll just ask Pip to come down if I could please. Council, just to make sure. No, 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 no. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a form you can fill online. And press it in. It's already on there. I know where it is. It's on the City of Adelaide's website. No. Through you, Lord Mayor. Uh, the. Any businesses who come into the city, once we are aware of them, they will be registered automatically. Yep. If they don't believe they're on the roll, which uh, we'll have something shortly on the website so they can check, yep. they can then co either contact us or provide us. There's actually a form that they can fill that they'll still need to send it. It won't be just purely online to update. They can send us the form though and we can update. Is there a form online now you can fill and submit? There is one. There is a form, but yep. you have to print it out. It's no, 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 I can show you right now on my iPad on the City of Adelaide website, there is a register to vote at the next council election for business where you can fill it up and plus submit on it. Where does that go? <laughs> that will come through to our uh, rates so um, got to update the details. Oh, so it's not that... an automatic process. Sorry, what was that last that bit? Would... 
it's it's not directly linked. It would still come through to our rights department and we'd update the record. Yeah, so there is a thing online now where you could press submit sends off without having to fill a physical form and send it. <laughs> I'm not, uh, I haven't actually seen it myself, so. Okay, can we take that on notice? It's definitely on there. I've seen it online. It was there four years ago and it's still on. So uh, it would be good for someone to check it. Please get back to us. Thank you, Councillor Aviad. Members, do I have any further debate about this motion? I don't see any further hands. I do. Councillor Wilkinson, before I go oh, to Councillor Lane to sum up. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, as, a, as a city business owner, um, I'm, I'm on the roll because I registered to be on the roll, but the rates go to the owner of the building that I'm in, so I don't receive the rates notice directly, even though I, should, I pay a portion the portion of the building that I rent um, for my office. So um, people in my position, business owners, do not um, have any idea about their opportunity to um, to vote in forthcoming council elections. So I, as someone in that position, I, I understand the circumstance and support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. I, Councillor Miley, to sum up. I'm always a bit nervous when uh, we don't know when Council, well, we, we don't know our own process, but um, the, from my understanding, it's a form, you have to fill it in. The only, the, what's being developed online is just so they can check and not actually enrol. So that's what the E News said to us. It was that they can, business can check if they're on the roll, but if they find that they're not, they have to go to the form. They can't automatically enrol, and I don't believe we're developing that, but let's do a double check. Um, and that we do have the advantage in the city that they retain, that they're retained on the roll. So, I mean, I, I don't know how other um, council areas have to deal with this every four years. It just seems pointless to me. And I know that there was some um, legislative change being considered, uh, but well, I think we need to, you know, in God we trust everyone else, please bring facts and data. Let's get the data on how um, the success of this. I think it's too late. I think that um, we're behind the eight ball on this, but um, I think I could only just leave uh, the CEO and admin with the message, please encourage as many people as possible to get on the electoral roll. Thank you, Councillor Maloney. So members, I put item 6, 11.6 before you. Those in favour? All hands up. Those against, the item is carried, 11.6. Thank you, councillors. Members, motions without notice, item 12. I don't have any, I'll take you on to item 13. Members, we have five items which we will debate in confidence, which means I require five motions to move into confidence. <coughs> First of which is Item 14.1.1, moved by Councillor Malani, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. No debate. I put that before you. Those in favour? Those against? Item 14.1.1 moves into confidence. Members, item 14.2.1, open space development opportunity. I need a mover to move into confidence. Moved by Councillor Corbell Moore, seconded by Councillor Slama. No debate. I put this before you, those in favour, those against, item 14.2.1 moves into confidence, item 14.2.2, do I have a mover to move that item into confidence, Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Slama, no debate, I put this matter before you, those in favour, those against, item 14.2.2 moves into confidence, item 14.2.3, do I have a mover please members? Moved by Councillor Slavata, seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. No debate. I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? Item 14.2.3 moves into confidence. Finally, members, item 14.2.4 to move into confidence. Can I have a mover? Councillor Abiyad, seconded by Councillor Milani. No debate. I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against, item 14.2.4 moves into conference. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, those persons who are not directly related to these f five matters, can I thank you for your attendance this evening in the City of Adelaide Chamber and wish you adieu. Good night.
Now, members, the time is 8.57, Tuesday the 12th of June. Can I thank you, members, for your debate? Can I thank our CEO and our directors? And can I especially thank Steve Mathewson and the team for delivering our 18-19 financial year budget? Well done to you and all concerned and all of our directors and our staff. Thank you very much.